Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mike Swanson, editor of WallStreetWindow.com. Mike, welcome back to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. It's an interesting time, as always, that's for sure, with the stock market and the economy in the United States. What kind of shape is the stock market in right now? What kind of trends are you seeing? Well, it's it's interesting. You know, in March and April, obviously the market began a big rally following the giant collapse. We saw the S&P fall over 30%. And then we had these lockdowns across the country over the coronavirus situation. Um, and the market began to rally. And... The big theme in April was that when the reopenings happen in the economy, that everything would boom, and the economy would boom, the stock market would boom, and we would go back to normal, essentially. Um, And then the reopenings began in May and the first week of June. And interestingly enough, many stocks actually topped out within a, a few days after the reopenings. In fact, one of the big events was the casinos opening back up in Las Vegas, and many stocks topped out two weeks after that uh, and have since been going sideways below their 150 and 200-day moving averages, not going anywhere, uh, and in fact looking pretty bearish to me. Um, and one reason this is happening is because 20% of American corporations are now so-called zombie companies. This means that they have so much debt that they're unable to innovate or really expand. All they're doing is financing their debts. I mean, that's one result of the economic slowdown we're having, having, but it's also a legacy of the past decade in which many corporations issued so much junk bond debt to buy back shares and so forth. So this is a big problem with much of the stock market and the long-term efficiency and growth of the U.S. economy. However, uh, you wouldn't know that if you're just looking at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ in particular, because the NASDAQ made a new high uh, just this week, uh, going through the high set in February and then going up about 750 more points after going through 10,000. And much of that move has been driven by 20 or so big cap tech stocks that heavily weight the indices, in particular Facebook, Amazon, Google, Netflix, and so forth. They Basically, those stocks alone have pushed the averages up while many stocks uh, have languished. But the problem is we're in an interesting moment because many of these leadership stocks have had big reversals this week. Uh, they went up a lot on uh, Monday and Tuesday and then went deep in the red. So, for example, Tesla two days ago was up 16% and then finished in the red. That Those are, in, a, in classic technical analysis terms, called key reversal days. They spell potential tops or, at the very least, moments of, a period of consolidation that would last for weeks, if not months. So a lot of the momentum in the market uh, in the leadership stocks has basically stopped, and we're at a moment where that means we're either going to see a rotation into new sectors that will have to push the market up higher, or else we're seeing the start of a topping process that would probably play out uh, through the rest of this month as more earnings come out for companies, and then we'd basically see the market averages begin to fade into the fall. I think the latter is the most likely scenario, but 
still we'll have to see how all this uh, plays out on the charts over the next couple of weeks. How are they easing back on the quantitative easing and the bond buying, the help from the Fed? Well, uh, they are a little bit. I mean, what happened is in March and April, they did massive uh, bond buying. And a lot of corporations took advantage of that uh, to raise funds that would last them for years, no matter what happens to the economy. So, for example, Boeing has done that. Uh, I think they've got like two bill- two years worth of cash, uh, meaning they can just sit there for two years. And the casinos have done that, too. They've got enough cash to last through all of next year, even if they had to shut everything down all over again. Uh, so there was a massive amount of borrowing. And then once we got to May and June, uh, less borrowing has been necessary by these companies. So it has fallen back quite a bit. But I think the Federal Reserve has basically pledged itself to step in if necessary uh, to increase those operations. And just yesterday, uh, one of the Federal Reserve governors, uh, her name is Bernard, uh, or Baynard, I should say, she gave a speech to a business group saying that she thinks that the U.S. economy is likely not to have the V bottom, people are talking about March and April, and need more Fed action. And she was advocating something called yield control. That would be where the Federal Reserve would announce that they're not only going to keep uh, short-term rates uh, at zero, but they're going to keep the long-term rates super low, too, and do bond buying on 10-year, 20-year bonds, whatever, no matter the duration, in order to do that. Uh, so that's something they're pledging, or, or she was saying they are likely to have to announce that formally at some point this year. So that's a promise by the Fed to do more. Um, and I think, you know, a, a lot of people in the United States are solely focused on the U.S. stock market. Uh, but in the end, I think the safest bet uh, for people is to buy, buy uh, is to buy gold and silver. For one thing, they're both extremely bullish. Uh, they've made new highs uh, just recently. Gold is, go- is now floating around the 1800 level. But if the Fed prints any more money, like they su- as some suggest they will need to, um, gold and silver will just benefit. So I think they're basically the easiest things for people to buy. You can buy you know, gold or silver ETFs, in my view, anytime going forward over the next couple of years and they hit the 50-day moving average. Not simply because they're bullish, but uh, as a safety play uh, to help diversify and protect yourself <clears throat> if there's more stock market declines and, and so forth. Is there a shortage of physical gold and silver, or can you get what you want now? Well, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure on the local level. I haven't tried personally to, to buy any for several years. But there is evidence that there is that happening because there's a little bit of a gap in the uh, spot price market for gold and in the futures market. However, that gap is much narrower than it was a couple months ago. So I don't think it's a dire problem uh, for people trying to, you know, looking to buy the physical gold. But you may have to do some hunting if local gold dealers are sold out. Uh, but that's something that can change, you know, week to week, month to month. And you got online sellers that I don't think there's any problem with them at the moment. Uh, with the physical product, would you be better off to say, I'd like some silver or gold, but I'm not going to pay a premium for it. So whenever you can deliver it, I'm happy with that. Well, um, if you can find someone <laughs> willing to do it, um, I, I don't know anyone doing that probably the best way to do it to do that though would be to buy futures contracts and get the delivery but you'd have to be willing to buy a a massive amount of gold or silver in order to do such a transaction um it might be easier to you know if you want to get do away with the um with with paying those fees and commissions 
trying to buy it online on eBay and places like that might be a way to do it. Or just if you can find individuals needing to buy their gold and just give them a smaller markup because the dealers get them too. The dealers charge, you know, basically get them to sell to them at a discount also. How much of a commission do you have to pay to buy gold? Well, usually 5 to 10%. Um, and I've found local dealers where you do it physically, you, you end up often paying less than you do online. Some of the online ones, a few smaller ones, can really charge you a lot of money. But there's really no reason for someone to pay more than 10%. We'll have more with Mike Swanson right after this. Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Writers, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mike Swanson. Mike, perhaps uh, one of the biggest surprises of the year is how Tesla is booming, even though they hardly roll any cars out of the production line. Yeah, it's been a remarkable stock, to, no doubt about it. I mean, it started this year out at $400, and it's it went above, it touched 1800 this week, which is absolutely amazing. And I follow what these Robinhood traders are buying, and Tesla is a stock that's been at the top 100 list on there uh, all year. In fact, at one point, it was in the top five. One of the reasons I believe it's done so well, though, is because a lot of people have been shorting that stock or trying to short it for the past several years. So it's a stock that's had a giant short position on it, and those shorts and they cover that helps to fuel buying it's just been a momentum wonder stock uh, one like no other but it spurred speculation in other stocks so for example this year we saw the appearance of another stock called nicola which promises to be another electric car business but it started out as a blank check company this year and basically by leaking itself to tesla it attracted Tesla traders into it. But the mania, and, and this stock went from under $10 in March all the way up to 95 and now it's 50 Totally crazy action. Um, but these stocks are just attracting uh, a wild amount of trading. Uh, Bloomberg, for instance, had an article today saying that a 1,000 people every single day in the United States are buying Tesla uh, among small investors. So uh, that's an amazing uh, figure <laughs> in number, and I think that explains why there's so much momentum in these stocks, or has been. But the problem is, at some point, they'll top out, and they could have already done it this week, and you'll have a lot of people sitting on losses uh, after that happens. We'll have more with Mike Swanson right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. 
Welcome back. We're speaking with Mike Swanson. Mike, with all this interest in Tesla, does this mean that electric cars are the way to go and oil is dead? Well, I, I would I wouldn't uh say that. I would say electric cars may be a way to go though, but Tesla's not the only company that makes them. I mean, uh, Toyota makes them. Uh just about every major car dealer or manufacturer isn't has plans to make them themselves. So, you know, I I, I don't think Tesla is necessarily the best way to invest in that trend. In fact, uh it's not because uh, the other car companies have cheaper stocks in terms of market cap and earnings and, and everything. And really, I don't think it's even a good time to invest, period. Uh, just wait for at some point the stock market has another drop and see if these other car stocks hold up and, and then buy them. As far as oil, though, um, I don't think oil is going away uh, either. Uh, you know, it may not be the best time to be buying energy stocks, but you know, oil right now is around forty dollars. It was all the way down to below ten in April. Um, I think most energy stocks are set up to go sideways for the rest of this year. Um, and if we do ever get a stock market decline again, like we saw earlier this year, I'd be looking to buy into energy stocks because they pay good dividends. And I think in the in the future, after this year. We're going to start to see inflation uh, become one of the defining characteristics of this next decade as a legacy of all the money printing that is now happening to keep everything afloat. And energy stocks will be something that would be the best ways to benefit uh, from that trend. You keep on top of the trends on Robinhood. So what's this uh, cost-free trading platform telling you right now? Well, uh, it's interesting. I, I spoke with a friend of mine that started trading with a Robinhood account <laughs> just a few min- months ago. And I asked him, how do you pick out the stocks you're buying? Because uh, he mentioned a couple of them. And when I started out in the stock market, I read a bunch of technical analysis books, classic investment books, uh, how to make money in stocks and, and so forth. And I would get on message boards and talk to people, get ideas that way, read magazines and use charting programs. And I still do some of these things. And I wanted to see, is this guy going on message boards? Is he reading books and so forth? And I found out, no, all he's doing is loading up Robin Hood and seeing what are the stocks on this top 100 list, and then reading about them and buying them. And interestingly enough, with Bitcoin and crypto coins two years ago, that's the same thing people interested in that sector were doing. They were just looking at what was getting the volume and then reading about the coins and just buying them. That's not a good strategy uh, as long for long-term investing because you're not taking into account valuations, you're not taking into account earnings, or even the charts. Uh, Robinhood doesn't even show you any real charting information. There's, so you, these people are really responding to short-term moves, you know, daily gyrations in this list. And then this fella told me he was buying a blank check company trading on the NASDAQ with a $500 million market cap. Uh, well, I never heard of such a thing. And then I went and investigated it, and there's about 20 stocks like that on Robinhood that people are buying. So that's what the people on there are doing, and they're just really new to the markets and starting out. And I think when the market does have another decline, and I think one is coming and could be starting in August, and we'll have to watch and see what happens the next couple of weeks, but whenever it does come, I think these people are going to really get hurt and banged up because they don't really know what they're doing, and and I think um, they're going to go through a tough experience, and some of them will learn from it and double down on and figure out, not double down on, on, on the money, but on the effort they're putting into this and, and realize, look, I got, this is a serious thing and this isn't just like uh, gambling on sports or something. I got to really 
know what I'm doing. I'm over my, you know, I'm out of my depth and read books and learn and, and, and some will do it. Um, so I think that's where this is headed. Um, and you know, a lot of these stocks are just really questionable. Uh, but, but this has been the story of Robin Hood for the past couple of years. I know last year, many times we talked about how, um, the, the cannabis, uh, growth marijuana company was the number one list, the number one stock on this list. And that stock went down all year last year and crashed this year, uh, and is no longer number one on the list. It fell, uh, way down the list. Uh, but being the number one stock was a danger sign, uh, you know, that these, you know, you don't want to be in it. And now, you know, Tesla's near the top of the list. America Airlines is number two. Delta, number four. Um, actually, uh, Tesla is one, is in the top ten. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines is in the top twenty. Uh, United Airlines. These are all companies, a lot of them, that are in financial difficulty and trouble. Even though the stocks have rallied from their lows in March, They've given back bulk of the gains. They're among the stocks that topped out in June right after the reopening and are now lagging the market very badly. And they're in danger if the stock market just pulls back 20% of falling 50%. Uh, so I think, you know, there's just a lot of people I think are trapped in these stocks are going to be over their heads and they're going to have a tough experience. They're going to have to learn from it. But that's what trading investing is. You know, when I started out, I, I was, got lucky, uh, and doubled my money in a month and then <laughs> lost most of, I, I lost all those gains and end up with half what I started with. And it took that to wake me up and, and understand that you got to know what you're doing and learn how to do this. Um, and I had that experience during a bull market when the market was going up. So <laughs> I just think that's, you know, my word of warning, but to people, but I, I think most people misunderstand and think I'm putting these people down or just being mean or something. And it's, that's just, that's not what I'm trying to do. There's incredible opportunities to make money in the financial markets, but this is, uh, much more difficult than it appears to be, um, and it's a competition. And uh, the statistics show uh, Terrence Odian did a study in the '90s of he got a hold of a hundred thousand brokerage accounts and analyzed the results, and half the people lost money, even when the stock market was going up, and only about a twenty-five percent beat the market. So it's tough. Um, but the, diff- the the good news is that the vast majority of people don't have a plan uh, of investing or trading. They're just throwing their money at stuff, and that's the advantage you, the listener or someone starting can have is to have a strategy, come up with one, um, and go from there. And that's that's the advantage because you're competing against people who are just basically gambling and they don't really. I think understand that they are, uh, the, the, a lot of people kind of do gambling behaviors in the financial markets and convince themselves it's not gambling because these are stocks and not lottery tickets or, or, or uh, sports bet stubs, but you can turn the stock market into safe investing with low risk or manic gambling. It's really up to the person how they want to interact with the markets. Um, and you have to decide how you want to do it. <laughs> That's the big decision. And Robinhood doesn't provide the resources to help people make those decisions or educate at all. Uh, you know, most online brokers have a bunch of resources explaining how to put in orders, giving you all kinds of investment strategies. Robinhood has none of that, you know, which is... A set, you know, not good. Well, you get what you pay for. If you don't pay for anything, <laughs> you shouldn't expect any advice. 
Mike, what kind of advice would you give people if they subscribe to Wall Street Window? Well, just, you know, keep looking at the updates. I send a free email out every single uh, morning with the most important headlines I see before the market opens. And then, you know, usually a link to a blog post I do with some charts and, and so forth, giving my day's opinions. Or I post up an interview uh with you on there actually every every two weeks and it's good to be able to talk with you and your listeners mike thank you so much for chatting with us thank you great to talk with you my guest has been mike swanson editor of wallstreetwindow.com if you have any questions for mike or any of our other guests you can send them to info at howstreet.com our youtube channel is talk digital network find us on twitter at howstreet we're also on facebook i'm jim goddard Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.